It's almost like our souls are being snatched by social media or soul shall media. This is what I think it looks like. I think social media is like this. We're, we're aerial. We, and social media is coming after it just to ha, pull out whatever that's in us. They really snatch it out of us. And for themselves, that's social media right there. They like, ha, ha, ha I got them. Welcome to the plug. Question really quickly. Do you all think social media makes our lives better or worse? If you had to vote, do you think social media would make our lives better or worse? Overall, I don't need no like, you know, 40 and 60 percent. Yes or no? Yes or no? Is it better? Yes. Or is it, I mean, well, just type in better or worse. Is it better or worse? And you all can talk in the audience. What do you all think? Is it better or worse? Depends on how you use it. I, d doesn't make it better or worse, though, is the question. Better. Okay. Better? 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 So the older folks are saying better. <laughs> I'm just noticing the, wait, wait, let's see, let's see, let's see. Worse, 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 better, worse. Wow. It's, <laughs> so it's all that what I'm hearing right now is depends on how, to you, how you use it. Older people don't use it as much as <laughs> younger people. Depends, better in my opinion. I, okay, that's fair, that's fair. I'm not here to say if it's better or worse with or without it. Uh, I think in life there's always going to be things that are going to come up that can make our life better or worse, but it depends how you use it. And so, but we need to understand the purpose of social media. And if we understand the purpose, then we could use it better for our advantage or not. Let's turn to Proverbs 4.20. Um, you all should know this scripture by heart by now. I say it every single week. It says, my son or daughter, give attention. Somebody type in the word attention. Somebody type attention. Give attention to my words. That means there's other words that you can pay attention to. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. So it says that, you know, God wants us to pay more attention to his words than anybody else's words that are out there. It says this word is very important. If you look up, it is attention. And back in the day when I was um, in high school, it was this guy named Bone Crusher that came out with this song. And this song, like, he would say this ad lib all the time. He would say this all the time, and it would get everybody really hyped. Attention! And everybody would be like, hey, I, he got their attention. And so we have to realize what is taking our attention. What is taking that? So let's look at the definition of attention really quickly. It says, a active direction of the mind upon some object or topic to stretch. Attention means that they want to stretch you in one particular direction, but really in the direction that they want you to go to it. Another word is a position assumed by a soldier with heels together, body erect, arms at the side, and eyes to the front. They want you in one particular position. That's what attention is about. And so this is what we have to be aware of. Whoever has the attention of your soul will, will take you in the direction of your life. Whatever has the most attention of your soul, whatever you are most attentive to is the direction you're going to go in life. If, you're fo if your focus and your attention is on your grades and your schoolwork and being successful, guess what? You're going to go in that direction. But if your attention is on girls and girls and more girls, that's the direction that you're going to go around. If your attention, whatever your attention is focused on, is the direction that you're going to go in. You have to think to yourself, what is my attention really on most of the day? What is my attention mainly focused on? Hopefully, 
a lot of our attention is going to God. Hopefully, that's the case. Um, whoever has the attention of our soul will dominate your life. What is a soul? Somebody tell me, what is a soul? What is a soul? Type that in for me real quick. What is a soul? Or you all talk to me. What's a soul? I got soul. Like, that's like, <laughs> that's what older folks say. What would you say? What is a soul? Your inner man or your spirit. I'm just taking answers. No right or wrong right now. What's a soul? We hear it all the time, right? Like, we hear that all the time, but do we know what it actually is? Uh, in between the spirit and your flesh? Okay. Um, okay. Your mind, body, and will is what somebody said. A person connected yourself a living thing where your emotions rest as well I like that I like that uh, so let's look at the definition of a soul and then we're going to like tie this into the scripture as well because if we know like a worldly definition can be different from a biblical definition but this definition is what I got from the Bible. So the Bible uses soul in a lot of different ways, like lots of different ways. It's not just your mind. It's not just your will. And it's not just your emotions. It's actually a lot of things tied into it. Okay. So a soul is a living being, life, self, person, desire, passion, appetite, and your emotion. Okay. So all of those wrapped in together. So I want to give you an example of what a soul is. And I think this, was a, this helped me out when I thought of an example. So it's almost like roots growing. Let's think of a plant. Let's think of a plant. And when we look at a plant, um, let's think that your body is the soil. Let's look at your soul as being the roots. And let's look at your spirit being the plant fruit or the actual plant. So if your body is the soil, which is kind of because our bodies go back to soil anyway, this is like the casing that the plants dwell in, right? Um, this, ho this house is the plant. Our bodies, they, like look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor, look at somebody on the screen, like that's just the outward shell. That's not the real them that you're looking at. These are just bodies. These are going to die. They're going to go away. Like, it's going to get old. Some of y'all bodies going to get wrinkly if they're not already. Um, hopefully, none of your youth bodies are looking wrinkly already. Um, but if it is, praise the Lord for them saggy bodies. Amen. But your soul is like the plant's roots. And so, it intakes what you put in the soil. The soul will intake what you put actually in the soil. So your ears, your eyes will feed your soul, right? Um, because what your body intakes will like start to seep into your soul. And then the plant's fruit is what your spirit produces. It's what your spirit produces. Um, your outward actions or your works or who you are as a person and what you actually do. So the soil, the roots, and the plants are one but then they aren't one. If you, look at, if you look at something together, the roots are actually part of the soil. They like take on part of the soil and then it grows up and the fruit is part of it as well. Like it's all one, but they're separate at the same time, right? Yeah, exactly. You can pull it out. And it's just like your body. Like when we die, our bodies is going to stay until that resurrection happens again when we get them new bodies. And we're going to start talking about that type of stuff in the next series. So what you put in the soil gets consumed by the roots, which gets pumped into the fruit. So if you put in the soil nitrogen, if you put in the soil calcium, you put in the soil good things, the roots are going to intake that in. Your soul is going to intake that in, and it's going to pump that into the actual plant. But it is the same exact thing with the negative. Whatever you're feeding through your body, it will get intaken through your soul, and you will start to produce that. So if you start to put 
mercury in the soil, your soul is going to start to soak that up and it's going to leak into your spirit and now you're going to start producing mercury or poison. And the thing that is interesting, they, they do this with plants. If there's a place that is uh, highly toxic because there's a lot of lead or mercury, they will put certain plants there because the plants will soak up all the poison, but you can't eat the plants. Because if you eat it, then you'll get that same poison, right? Like, you'll get the same thing in you. And our souls are the same exact way. A lot of times we are putting ourselves in poisonous environments and we are soaking up all of the poison and then we wondering why our life is a mess. Then we're wondering why things are going haywire. Then we're wondering why we're so depressed and why we're sad and why we're cutting and why we're uh, anxious and why we are all of these different things. We're wondering why maybe you've been soaking your soil, your soul in poison. And you're always going to produce bad fruit if you're soaking your soul in negative. We have to start soaking our soul in, in the Word of God. You will produce good fruit if your soul is in taking the Word of God. You, I mean, it's, it's really like one plus one. It's going to happen. Like, you can't go wrong if you follow the Spirit of God. Like, you can't go wrong. Now, let's look at Genesis 2-7. Genesis 2-7 says this, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. This word being right here actually means soul. Man became a living soul after the Spirit of God breathed into him. If God breathed into our spirits, and they, and I'm sorry, if God breathed into our mortal bodies and they came alive, they started to flourish and came alive. If the things that we're intaking are opposite of God's breath, what is that going to do to our bodies? Thank you, Monet. It's going to suffocate. It's going to kill. It's going to choke out the good. Because weeds always grow faster than actually fruits, than trees that produce fruit. And so it will grow up quickly and it's going to choke out all of the negative and suffocate it out of us. And that is why you have to be so aware. I say this all the time, like this whole series is summed up. Pay attention to what you feed yourself. That, I mean, like if you can start doing that and you can start paying attention to that, I promise you, you will go so, it's a small adjustment, but it will have big benefits, big benefits. Um, media is too intentional for us to be unintentional. They are super intentional, especially social media. Social media is way too intentional for us to unintentionally be going to our phones just because we're bored and we go to Snapchat, we go to TikTok, we go to Instagram, just because we get bored and we're not intentional with how we're using our devices, but they're very intentional so that you use your device. And so we just have to be aware of that. A lot of our lives are being destroyed by what we let in our soul. It's almost like our souls are being snatched by social media or soul shall media. Y'all check this out really quick. This is what I think it looks like. I think social media is like this. We're, we're Ariel, we, and social media is coming after it just to ah, pull out whatever that's in us. They really snatch it out of us. And for themselves, that's social media right there. They like, ha ha, I got them, ah, laughing at us and stuff like that. But we just have to be aware of what we put in ourselves. I think it's called soul shall media soul shall media. What can they take from our soul? That Because a lot of us, our souls are so sucked into this thing. Our, our emotions are sucked into it. Our whole beings are sucked into social media, and that is not how God designed us to live. Your soul shall do whatever the media tells it to do. 
If you don't understand the purpose of something, it will destroy you. If you don't understand the purpose of it, it will, it will destruct your entire life, just like a car. A car is very good, but if you think, that's why, you know, they have age limits to when you can get your license, because some of our, some people's brains can't comprehend, like, a car is just supposed to get you from point A to point B. A car isn't made to uh, do flips. It's not made to be doing all type of other stuff, you know? That car can kill people, but it also can help people as well. Like an ambulance can take somebody to the hospital to help them, but an ambulance can also kill hundreds of people at the same time. And it's the same thing as social media. What are we using it for? What is the purpose of social media? To connect with friends? I hear that. What else? You all type in, what is the purpose of social media? Good morning, Gecko Man 2.0. Thanks for logging in. What is the purpose of social media? You all, to connect with friends as well. Platform to express freedom? Freedom of speech? Okay, I like that. Platform to express freedom of speech. What else we got? Promote your business? Market? I like that. To get important information? Hmm, okay. Network, ah, to be able to connect with other people um, so that you all can both benefit, to express yourself, to see what other people are up to, to tie you in with what you search up, keep you in the loop, I guess, to keep, oh. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, where does that go, where does that go? To catch us up on the new beauty standards. That is what social, which that is kind of deep, yo. That's, that's pretty deep right there. To control people, to entertain you. Wow, that's interesting. So we have our own thoughts on what social media is for. But we can only find out the purpose of something by knowing why they created it. We can come up with our ideas of what the purpose is, but why did the creators of social media create it? And if we find out why they created it, that's the purpose. And it's the same thing with God. You're going about your own life trying to do things. What is God saying your purpose is? Because that's your true purpose. Some of us are, are going after the wrong purpose in life. God didn't create you for that. God didn't create you for that. But anyway, let's keep on going. Let me read this, what uh, the Netflix CEO had a discussion about YouTube, Facebook, and how, you know, their fight against, you know, the attention and how much time. And this is what the CEO of Netflix, Reed Hastings, had to say. On, um, he said, the real company's competitor is sleep. And it, Netflix even t retweeted it, sleep is my greatest enemy, which is really deep if you think about it. They're saying, like, yo, the biggest competition we have is sleep. Like, so this makes me think, and this is going to tie back into the definition of why they created social media. Social media is created to capture your attention. That's what it's completely about. Who can gain the most attention from you? Because if they can gain more of your attention and keep you on it longer, then they're going to make money on the back end because then they can advertise. They want to make money. That's what it's about. And so they will do whatever it takes to keep you hooked on social media. It's all about grabbing your attention the longest. That is what they are after your attention. So um, this, is what the, this is what the guy said, Reed Hastings said, you get a show or a movie you're really dying to watch and you end up staying up late at night. So actually compete, we actually compete with sleep. And then he said this, and we're winning. How many of us stay up mad late watching something or scrolling on something and we know we need to be sleep? We know, I mean, we, we tired while we doing it. Phone smacking us on the head because we fall asleep and we looking in our beds like this, like sleep 
Actually, social media is beating sleep, something essential for our life, something we need to have because they, it's all about that attention and they are very smart in gaining your attention. Actually, they trap us with how they keep us with the attention. Um, 2 Corinthians 2.11 says this, lest Satan should take advantage of us. None of us want to let Satan take advantage of us, right? Like, that just like, that don't sound good to let Satan take advantage of us. We don't want, like, people taking advantage of us, much less Satan. Like, we don't want him taking advantage of us. And then Paul said, for we are not ignorant of his devices. But some of us are ignorant of Satan's devices. And if you are ignorant of the tools that he's using, then you are going to get taken advantage of. We have to know what we are getting ourselves into. People go to school to study how you think so that they can keep you on certain things longer. You all check out this video on persuasive design media. These are certain classes that people take. Was at Stanford, uh, there, was a, there was a class called the Persuasive uh, Technology Design class. And there's a whole lab at Stanford that teaches students how to apply uh, persuasive psychology principles into technology to persuade people to use products in a certain way. So it's not about giving you all this freedom, it's about sucking you in to take your time. So the goal is to keep us on our devices longer. Why? For any company whose business model is advertising or engagement-based advertising, meaning they care about the amount of time someone spends on the product, uh, you know, they make more money the more time people spend. So the game becomes how can I throw different persuasive techniques to get people to stay, to spend as long as possible, and to come back tomorrow. So if we think about it, on Instagram or on Snapchat or on TikTok, they always have these new things that pop up. New filters, you got new things that you can play with, you got different music you can do, like all of these things. So there's like, hey, come back to us. Hey, come, like that lady, luring us, trying to snatch that soul away. Luring us in, always doing something new. And so... Um, we're going to look at some of these traps and what they do, and then we're going to talk about how we can get out of the trap, how we can set ourselves up to get out of the trap. Uh, 1 Timothy 6.10 6, says, for the love of money, for the, it doesn't say money is evil, the love of money is, is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil, evil. So people will do evil things, they will study your brain and realize, yo, I can hack their brain so that they can stay on longer, which we know it's going to ruin their life, but guess what? We gonna get rich. And so they will do stuff like that just to keep you hooked or addicted. It's almost like a drug. Like social media is almost like a drug, yo. Like literally, like I be scratching on some, oh boy, ooh. Like you, you, you looking like you want another hit anytime you go on. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. So companies pay because social media has your attention. That's what I call paying attention. You pay for their, they get paid because they have your attention. So let's look at some of the ways that they try to snatch our souls away from what really matters in life. Soul shall media. So Endless feeds where your social media never stops. Like, you can scroll for years and it's never going to stop. That's one way that they keep you hooked on. Because if it ends, then you have a mindset on some, oh, it's over, let me move on to something else. They figured, oh, if we keep it going, you ain't never going to get off. Uh, you, you, you'll never get off. Um, on certain videos that you'll play, they'll automatically play the next video without you actually clicking onto it. It will automatically switch to another video. Like TikTok does it, um, Facebook does it, um, Netflix does it, YouTube does it. Like, 
You can stop it on YouTube. You can if you hit that, but they give you like five seconds. That thing goes out quick too. And once you start, you're already captivated in and you're like, ah, I can't stop now. Yeah, I'll stop at the next one. And then the next one comes and it's like, ah, okay, give me two more, two more. And I promise you I'm getting off. Two more and then what? Two more, two more. Like, right, you got five more, two more. (laughs) So that's another way. Likes, notification. Man, notifications are one of the biggest things. You know how when you get on your phone and you see a notification on that social media, you get a little excited. If you're just being honest, you see that number in that notification. It's like, ooh, what's the guy? Ooh, who didn't like my photo? Something like that. Maybe it's just me that do that. Maybe, maybe it's me. I know y'all be doing that too. When, oh boy, when you see numbers on the DM, it's like, ooh, right? And so, they started doing things that you don't even need notifications about just so those numbers could pop up and you get excited. I don't care that Johnny B. Wise posted something online. They just put a notification, Johnny B. posted something because you see the number and it's like, ooh, it's like, it's like a, a, a little hit of cocaine. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, ooh, that's good. Ooh, that's good. Pull to refresh. Pull up to refresh. You know, like, I do this often, I ain't gonna lie. When I'm on social media, I'll pull it back up so it refreshes so that something new could pop up. And it's almost like a slot machine. It's almost like a slot machine. You pull the lever in, and while it's going, you're getting excited. Like that little bit of excitement keeps you drawn in. And they know our brains are like that. You know, they actually study slot machines and how they work and incorporate that same technology into social media. The only problem is a slot machine, you get up and you leave, and people are still very addicted to slot machines, right? People are addicted to gambling. The problem with social media is that you always take the slot machine with you. You're walking around with the slot machine all day long, ooh, like, and it's ruining our brains, yo. It's ruining us. It's ruining. Streaks, oh my God, streaks are of the devil. Streaks are of the devil. I'm just going to be honest. Like, not in the Bible Bible app. So the difference, ah, Bible app streaks are different from Snapchat streaks. Now let me tell you how and why. Snapchat, ah, ah, Snapchat streaks are like this. You get on, did I say it wrong? Oh, okay. Don't worry about it. Snapchat streaks are like this. They They put a goal in front of you that was never your goal. And you don't want to mess up their goal that you've now taken as your goal. Bible app, you want to continue being on the Bible. You want to do that. So it's more so beneficial. So you think you want to keep your a Snapchat streak going with somebody. You think you want to do that, but you never cared about that before. Yeah. It's not as pressured on the Bible app. And that's like, that's like one of those things as well, iffy as well. Um, just streaks on the Bible. Anyway, we're not going to go into that. Algorithms. Algorithms are a trap. Think about it. They cater what you want to your mindset so that you stay on longer. So if you start watching fight videos, what are they going to start showing? All these fight videos. And now you, now you hooked, right? It's like, oh boy, look at, ooh, like, and they're going to keep on catering and putting this menu in front of you every single time. And we all think that our minds and our decisions and what we do is the right way. But the scripture says this in Proverbs 14, 12. There's a way that seems right to a man, to a human being, but its end is the way of death. There is a way that seems right, but the end is the way of death. Notifications, we talked about this. We talked about this. So how do we fight? How do we fight against these traps that they have intentionally studied to take advantage of us? 
It's one thing to know it, now we need to figure out how. Matthew 18, 9, I love what Jesus says. I use this scripture often. One of my favorite scriptures. I say that every single week. For if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off. (laughs) Cast it from you. For it is better for you to enter into life lame or main rather than having two hands or two feet. Jesus is saying, yo, I'd rather you have no hands (laughs) I'd rather you live life with no hands than to get in the trap. Like, do what you need to do to get out. He's not really saying, like, maim yourself. or Like, he's not, let's let's make this very clear because some people will take this as as a good way to cut. No, that is not what the scripture is saying, right? This is a metaphor. Get rid of stuff, okay? Get, do what you need to do to cut this stuff off. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell's fire. Some of y'all don't believe in hell. If y'all believe in Jesus, you better believe in hell because Jesus talks about hell. If you don't have a vision for your life, somebody else is going to give you their vision. One of the biggest ways to fight against this, have a vision for your life. Because if you have goals and a vision and things that you have on your own plate that you want to do, nobody else can just put something else in front of you all the time. You have your own goals. You have your own vision. What is your vision? What is your goal? And some of you all, you just got to be honest. Like, yo, I'm, I'm not strong enough yet. God, I need you to produce that self-control, that fruit of the Spirit, self-control in me. But until that's produced, I'm going to do my schoolwork and put my phone in the other room. Because you know when you're doing your homework and you may, you may finish a couple problems or something like that, you're like, ah, I'm going to reward myself real quick and look on something. On some, and then you'll be on there for so I do it too. Like they get me, they get me, right? And so there's certain things that I do to ensure that I keep myself out of the trap. Like there's things I have strategically set up things so that I, because I'm human and they got my brain on lock. They studied my brain so they know they can get me. And so I got to get them before they get me. So I don't get God because I, I, I'm not trying to get God. I don't want to get God. Are you getting God? Are you getting God? I, I ain't about to get God no more. Which of these three will you do? I'm going to talk about some points, and I want you to make a decision today. I want you to take down some notes. Make a decision today. Pick three of them. Pick three of these that you will do to start changing so that you can set up barriers to fight against, okay? Number one, limit the usage via screen time. Limit the usage via screen time. This is something that I do. My screen time, I I ain't going to lie, mine is like, y'all like, what? Mine is set to an hour. That's it. I got an hour for all of my social media accounts. That's it. Like, and sometimes they be they be getting me because it's like I get on like group me or something like that and they count that as time. I'd be like, Ugh. anyway, but when the ignore, when the time limit comes up, just don't hit ignore, <laughs> like, like fight, like be disciplined enough to say, okay, my time is up. My time is up. My time is up. I need to just get off of it. Right. This helps me a lot. I ain't going to lie. Time, this time screen, screen time helps me out a lot. Take Oh, for Androids, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Android. <laughs> you got to download an app for it. It comes on the iPhone. Hey, amen, amen. Yes, Jesus loves Apple. Um, take notifications off. Take the notifications off. Like, that's something I, I, I actually did not too long ago. I went through and everything that I don't need a notification on, I turned that bad boy off. I don't need a notification for this. I don't need a notification for that. I don't need you reminding me to come play this video game that I downloaded on my phone. Like, I don't need you doing that. I got to take control of my life. Turn them notifications off, yo. Turn them off. Come up with three that you're going to do. Reorganize your screen. 
This is something that has helped me a lot. I reorganize my screen, and so this is how mine looks. That's my first screen, and then I have my apps, and then I have like social media, and I put them into folders to make it more difficult to get into. And if you make it more difficult to get into, it, it actually, it's, a, it's just a mental thing for me. My first screen is blank. It's, I keep it blank. Androids, I'm sorry, you're going to have to try to do something a little. <laughs> you can do that? Oh, okay, praise God. You know, got a little good. My first page, my first page is only things that I need, that I will use on a daily basis that's not trying to suck away time from me. I got my notes on here. I got my Google Maps on here. I got my photos, my settings, my weather, things that aren't going to try to keep me entrapped, but that I use pretty often. Um, number four, unfollow people who will make you stumble or feel down about your life. If you look at somebody's stuff all the time and you're looking at celebrities all the time, it's like, dang, I wish my life was like that. Unfollow them, yo. Nobody should make you feel like that. And they ain't like, don't let anybody make you feel down about yourself. Sometimes you got to unfriend your friends. Well, I had to get rid of a lot of my friends. I ain't going to lie. Like, and, and they like, bro, like, what's up, bro? Like, you sorry. Like, I don't like your posts. Like, they suck. Your posts suck. Like, you're, you're a crappy poster. Like you're, like, you're bad. Like, I can't look at your stuff. And so sometimes you have to unfollow people. Who cares if they found out? Who, ca who cares if they get upset with you? At least you don't get to go to hell because of them. <laughs> like, like, who cares? Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Number five, do a social media detox. Do a social media detox. And it may be tough for a little bit. We, we got challenges that you, it may be tough, but do it. In the first two days, you may start scratching all the skin off the side of your neck. You may scratch it all off because you're fiending, right? Y'all like, wait, bro, <laughs> whoa. But you may feel anxiety for a couple days. You may feel nervous. You may feel like, uh, uh, I don't know how to act anymore. But yo, if, you, if something has that type of hold on you, you need to get rid of it. So those are some five things. I need you to come up with three. And you need to like put these into plan. Utilize these for your life. Um, but I think the most important thing that any of us can do, we have to first realize that God wants the attention of our souls more than anything else. And he proves this. Like God proved that he wants your attention more than anything else. No one is trying to get their, your attention more than God. Think about it. A perfect God created human beings, and this perfect God created us in his image and in his likeness. Yet, sin took our attention away from God. Sin distracted us from God. Sin snatched that attention away from us. Now, and then that sin made us imperfect. And the scripture says this, the scripture says the wages of sin is death. And so anytime we sin, we got to realize we deserve to die. Like this is a perfect God who's never done anything wrong. We deserve to die when we do any type of sin. Like a lie would be justifiable to God to strike you down, right? Uh, God would be justifiable. I'm perfect. I ain't never done nothing wrong. Like what are you doing? He would be justified for doing that. But yet God, who created man and wanted our attention, wanted our attention so bad. He wanted our attention so bad that he said, you know what? They are getting ruined by sin and it's grabbing their attention. Jesus, go on down there in the flesh. God said, I'm going to go down in the flesh. I'm going to come down to their level so that I could get their attention. Yet, human beings still rejected Jesus Christ when he came down in the flesh. And then he said, you know what? I'm not just going to come to the earth. I know you all are supposed to die for not paying God all the attention and paying attention to sin. However, I'm going to die for you so that you can get the attention. You and the Father can be on the same page. So if you're paying attention to him, you're really paying attention to who you really are. That's the price 
that Jesus paid on that cross. He paid the price to get your attention back. And that is like way more extreme than any social media platform study has ever done. That is the type of loving God that we have. And he wants a relationship with you. But the only way to have that on the same page is if you accept him as your Lord and Savior. Only way, and the thing is this, right? You don't have to, you can make a decision in your mind and in your heart today. You can make that, you know what? I realize that the time that I'm spending on social media is actually starting to ruin me, and now I'm going further away from God, doing things that he would never want me to do, hurting myself physically, spiritually, mentally, in all these ways, and I need to change that up. You can make that decision in your heart, and you can pray that at home. You can pray, God, you know what? I just want to get that connection back right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to follow us on IG at theplug.ym, and we'll see you next week.